So Vince Gilligan does this thing, and I'm not sure if it's a performance or a deeply held personal belief, but oftentimes when he's being interviewed, he'll repeat the same phrases and ideas. Now, I remember this from when I was promoting my stuff. You, you're trying to sell a message, but in that, you also have some authorial sort of editorial, here's why I wrote it the way I wrote it, and here's what we intended. And, you know, you can find a million clips, for example, of Vince Gilligan saying, we were trying to take Mr. Chips and turn him into Scarface, and that's Breaking Bad, because that's part of the pitch, and that's catchy. So he says it a lot. But he also says this other thing that I, I wanted to talk about for a second, which is he uh, repeatedly, he and some of the other writers, express sort of pearl-clutching shock that the audiences embrace Walter White as a hero or embrace Saul Goodman as a hero and want the best for them. And he'll often say things like, we would write things in the writer's room and we'd be like, there's no turning back from this. And then we would see the reviews and people would be even more invested. And that, that strikes me weird for two reasons. Um, it's good if that's true. I mean, gr great. I think Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul are two of the best shows of all time. But I want to say something about that, which is we live, by the time Breaking Bad came out, The Wire and The Sopranos were already on TV. I think Dexter was already on TV. Like, it, you can't even say it existed in a pop culture landscape without brutal, murderous, morally void antiheroes. We have always loved them. They are, they are our fantasy of revenge and power and, uh, you know, a dark rise. We have seen that story many times as an aspirational story. Scarface! We like Tony Montana the whole way through, right up until the stuff with the best friend and the sister. And that's when we really lose him. And it's like, oh, it's a tragedy. But he's so fun to watch, we're into him, right? And when I thought about that, it revealed, because I, I, you know, Better Call Saul just finished, and it revealed this larger thing about Breaking Bad. Which is, you know, if you watch Breaking Bad, that at the end of the day, Breaking Bad exists in a very moral world. And if you do something, if you break bad, you're going to get fucking snapped in half eventually. Something's coming for you and it'll ruin your life. Criminals don't get away with it. They don't get away with it, right? In one way or another, it all shakes out and becomes tragic. Now, of course, that's not like the real world. In the real world, criminals and the cartels and all this shit, they get away with it all the time. Some big meth producers die old and uncaught on an island somewhere. That's the unfortunate truth of reality. But Breaking Bad exists in this world of the scales of justice. Ah, which brings me to what I'm saying, which is what the fuck is the alternative in the world of Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul? I want you to think about this. How many nice people do we meet who are like doing well in their lives? Well, I can think of a few off the top of my head and guess what? They are presented as antagonist assholes. The performance is antagonist asshole. The fucking character is antagonist asshole. You know, Howard Hamlin and Skylar White. These are both good people, but they, it's not presented like it's fun to be them or like you'd want to hang out with them. In fact, it's incredibly hard to find even one nice, competent, successful, good person in the world of Breaking Bad, even across law enforcement. Fucking Hank is, he cheated on his wife three hours before they got married in the webisode. He's a misogynist, violent scumbag. He's a corrupt police officer who holds people under false pretenses and lies constantly. He's a bully and a brute to Walter. This is the good guy. And there is no alternative. Ted Beneke, a moron. Uh, you know, he, the, the servants, Hewell and, and what's his name? The servants of Saul, Saul's secretary. Everyone we meet who is supposed to be like a nice normal person is presented as a dumb cartoon. And that's because Breaking Bad, especially in the early seasons, has this sort of unique comic aesthetic to it where it's still got, it almost feels like Malcolm in the Middle is almost like bleeding into it from years ago. And then it loses that as the show goes. But like that kind of like poppy comic, you know, mid 2000s, it's a, it's a slice of life comedy. Except that, what the fuck? <laughs> like, you look at the fates of the characters in Breaking Bad, 
And the fates of the characters of Breaking Bad are all determined by a dark god because they live in a dark, unfair world that benefits them right up until... With By the way, the, the main characters of Breaking Bad have plot armor like three feet thick. Like, even though, even though the ways they get out of situations are often really well constructed and brilliantly written, at the end of the day, if you placed... Any other character, even ones who ostensibly would be better suited to survive that situation, if they're a good person, it doesn't work out for them. If they break bad, somehow they figure out a somehow you got to call the guy. Even like, even like Gail on Breaking Bad, a sweet, nice guy who's a criminal, probably kind of a shitty guy deep down. He's cooking meth. Like maybe, maybe not the best guy, even though he's like cute, Gail, the... Gil Boddicker, and he gets shot in the face. In fact, can you think of a time in Breaking Bad or Better Call Saul where someone just did something nice for someone else and it worked out well? Even the Sandpiper thing got completely complicated and fucked in Better Call Saul. And I just noticed that because it, it's, it, it, it makes when Vince Gilligan says like, how can people still like these people? It's like, well, buddy, you didn't give him anyone else to like. You know, when Jesse gets that girlfriend and it's that sweet thing and then they fall down addiction and then she starts blackmailing them to the degree that she's a major problem. And then her father, who ostensibly is a nice normal guy, ends up being responsible for a major air disaster. Like, it's so funny it, as a writer. It's so funny to look at the world of something and go, wait a minute, <laughs> like, oh, being an evil drug dealer is so bad. Well, it's better than being one of the fucking boring, normal cartoons. I, it's just an observation about Breaking Bad that I thought I'd share because I love that show. But I just think it's so funny how, like, every nice or good person on the show is a joke. Only evil people are real. And they wonder why we love them.